if you're in what is bracketed as a, a low-income family, then this one's for you. Uh, low-income families could be spending, on average, 18%. That's nearly one-fifth of their income after housing costs on energy bills come April when prices are expected to rocket. Mm. That's according to the new analysis by the Joseph Roundtree Charity. Well, Labour's calling for a cut <clears throat> in VAT on these bills as it promises to fundamentally reform Social Security to tackle poverty. Uh, Labour's Shadow Work and Pension Secretary, Jonathan Ashworth, uh, joins us now. Um, it's quite a depressing prospect, isn't it, uh, what's coming up in the next couple of months, because we know that the price cap on energy bills is going to go up. But, I mean, they'll be unaffordable for some. We've heard warnings even from our own Martin Lewis. People will be choosing between heating or eating. What would you suggest, then, that the government should do? I mean, you're absolutely right. It's a real cost-of-living crunch for... Working people, families, pensioners, the heating bills are rocketing, the price is going up in the shops, these big tax rises coming as well in April. And because inflation is set to hit 6%, we think, in April, that could mean cuts in real terms for pensioners and others who rely on support. It means more poverty, it means people, more people going to food banks. It's going to be really, really tough. So we are saying to the government, look, cut VAT on fuel bills impose a windfall tax on the big fuel companies because you've got some of the leaders of the fuel companies like at BP saying it's like a cash machine at the moment because they're making so much money impose a windfall tax and use that money that you get from the windfall tax to expand the discount scheme for a lot of families and pensioners that would mean 600 pounds off the fuel bills uh, this year that would make a huge difference that would be real help now but of course you've got as you've been already been talking about on the program Boris Johnson mired in all his scandals about the parties and his lies when actually Tory MPs should be focusing on this cost of living crunch and the awful April that is coming up for families, but who do working you people believe when it comes to uh, Boris Johnson and the party on uh, May the 20th. Do you believe Boris Johnson when he says it was technically within the guidelines? Um, or do you believe Dominic Cummings, who drove to Barnard Castle to test his eyesight during the lockdown, who says the Prime Minister is lying? Well, Dominic Cummings says he's prepared to swear on oath, but he also, I think, says that there are emails to that effect as well. So, so there is if. There should be proof, which I presume the inquiry can get hold of, uh, if, there are, if it's on an email system and a government email system. And I think the problem now is that uh, look, Tory MPs are kind of weighing up whether it's in their electoral interest or not to stick with Boris Johnson. They shouldn't be making a decision based on whether they think that helps them hold their seat or not. They should be acting in the national interest. And I think the national interest now is to get rid of Boris Johnson because he is clearly a liar. And when working families and pensioners are going to be hit really hard by the heating bills, the tax rises, the real terms cut in the pensions, we need a government with a laser-like focus on the interests of families and pensioners in this country, not with this focus on trying to save Boris Johnson's skin. Is it in the interests of the Labour Party, the opposition, to have Mr Johnson out of office? Because at the moment, with him there, you're, you're in double figures ahead of him in the polls. You're over 10% ahead. Uh, surely, actually, it would, uh, it would serve you better in the coming elections in May and when a general election comes, based on those poll figures at the moment, to, to have him still there. Well, I mean, it, 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 it's, a t it's tempting to go down that particular avenue, but I always believe you've got to act in the national interest, and the national interest comes ahead of your party interest. And for me, Boris Johnson has sullied and disgraced Downing Street when we need a government completely focused on families, working people and pensioners, tackling poverty, tackling this cost of living crunch that is coming in this, this awful April. And you know, I just think these Tory MP, look, you know, they're all sort of weighing up whether... If they get rid of Johnson, does that help them win their seat? Or does them, are, they, are they more likely to lose their seat with Boris Johnson? That shouldn't be the motivation. Winston Churchill always said, national interest first, then constituency, then party. For Tory MPs, it seems like it's the other way round. That's not right. How much faith do you put in this coming report, the Grey Report, as it's been called? Uh, do you think it will do the job? Do you think we'll, we'll be in a position to know a lot more about what's been going on in, in Party Central at Number 10? Well, remember, the, the Sue, Gray, I mean, Sue Gray is a civil servant who I think has got an absolute integrity, but she's just going to establish the facts. She's not going to deliver a verdict on Boris Johnson's future. She's just going to lay out the facts as she understands it, having interviewed civil servants and so on. And actually, I think we, we already know a lot of the facts. We know that 
uh, uh, Boris Johnson had a party on the 20th uh, of May when he shouldn't have done. We know that staff were uh, having parties in Downing Street some, uh, on the evening before the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral. Pretty, pretty disgusting. And the point is, is, as William Hague says in the Times, a former Conservative leader, William Hague, by the way, he's not a Labour person, as you know, a former Conservative leader, he says culture is set at the top. Okay. And Boris Johnson set, has set this culture in Downing Street. And just for those people who've seen the photograph of your own leader uh, swinging from a bottle of beer um, in an office under restrictions, can you explain to people why it's all right for the leader of the Labour Party to have a drink uh, under restrictions inside, but not OK for members of staff at Number 10 to have a drink outside under the same restrictions? Because he was in work meetings in an office and got a takeaway and had a drink with a takeaway before returning to work meetings. So he's been clear on that. And I do think that is different. And significantly, we're talking about up to 15 parties in Downing Street that we know of. And of course, Boris Johnson not only broke the rules, he's the one who wrote the rules. And he, and he was beamed into all our front rooms night after night, telling us not to break the rules while at that... Well, doing those press conferences, doing those interviews on the 6 o'clock news, and then going to parties afterwards. So I do think it's very different. Okay. All right, Jonathan Lashworth, thanks very much indeed.